take you to the river. Tell you what I see. See the truth in the water shining back up at me. Everything in time since the world began. blessing. O oh, Creator God, You sent forth the four winds from the north, the south, the east, and the west to blow over creation as You brought all things into being. You have created delicate ecosystems that each part holds such what each square represents as a part of the greater whole. We pray that you will bless this gathering and that this time will be a time of renewal, that we may derive strength from one another, that we might find hope through the colors and the artistic expressions that have been brought forth to this place at this time. We pray for our communities, wherever they might be, that are affected by fossil fuel projects. We pray that those who stand against them, wherever they might be this day, across our nation, around this world, as we see the oceans on fire, as we see climate begin to heat up and people passing out from the heat on the west coast of our nation, things must be done. And we seek your guidance and your wisdom that we might not be apathetic, that we might be committed and convicted to what you have called us to do and be in this place at this time. Lord, bless each one who has contributed to this water quilt and for each person here who has put their voice, their hands and feet, and their very lives on the line for all that you have created and for all that you have called good. O oh Lord, it is in your love that we hold on to hope and find our strength. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I want to introduce a couple of other folks who, who worked on the Water Quilt Project uh, this winter. Bernadette Clark and Rachel Blankenship Tucker have been essential to the project and, and uh, the, the work that it has taken to bring us all together. And we're going to sing together a song called Hallelujah, written by Carisha Longacre and Sarah Nutting of Mamus. I'm gonna let myself be like 
here today. Um, and so now we're going to hear from nine of the quilters who created squares. The Water Quilt Project um, exists to honor and uphold uh, the, the waterways threatened by the proposed Mountain Valley Pipeline and Mountain Valley Southgate. And, uh, and these quilters made uh, squares that, that represented uh, their individual stories. And so nine folks are here to share those stories with us today. And we're going to start with Betty Werner of Floyd and formerly Franklin County, Virginia. Um, welcome, Betty. Thank you. I guess speak from here? Okay. Hi, I'm Betty Werner. Um, golly, many, many years ago, it seems now, Somebody came knocking on our door or sending letters to us seeking, seeking some easements across our property. Our family moved to Virginia from Florida in 2010 and 2011 to have a four-generational um, farm seeking to be beyond organic, as we like to say, in Franklin County. And settling in there, with four grandchildren, my elderly mother, my husband, daughter, son-in-law. So we were a family of nine. And we played in the creeks every spring, summer, fall. Little Creek, Teal's Creek. Um, beautiful water watersheds. <laughs> anyway, I'll get teary. Um, we even had... Um, informal baptisms of three of the grandchildren in the creek one summer, one hot summer July day. But all that changed 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, even now, things are a mess. Um, we were harassed and, and uh, followed everywhere we went, even on our own property. People were arrested. I was threatened a couple times with arrest, even though I was way off the right of way. Uh, we all cried. My pictures of the trees after they were cut, the stumps and the ends of the trees, they were crying also. Um, our creeks are all crying. Um, Little Creek is like a little river, but it's called a creek, and it has been um, 
just deteriorating in the last four years, ever since Mountain Valley worked on the property right next to the creek. So I did three squares um, representing, the one here is representing all of Teal's Creek because when I researched it, it has five crossings, four miles of impacts, 10 unidentified stream crossings, and two large wetlands that are impacted by, by um, Teal's Creek, by Mountain Valley Pipeline on Teal's Creek. And since I'm a math person, I calculated just their estimates in their documents of how much discharge is potentially going to be entering um, the Blackwater watershed. Um, just from Teal's Creek um, is over almost 10,000 cubic yards. And then Teal's Creek on our property goes into Little Creek and Little Creek is also impacted by several, well, two crossings, three wetlands that drain to it, and I didn't even count them, but five or six unidentified tributaries that go into it. And it is uh, responsible for about almost 6,000 cubic yards of fill. Um, if anybody read anything from EPA the other day, they mentioned that fill. And they call it temporary fill, but if you read the footnote, it says this is discharge which will impact U.S. waterways. And that was the point EPA made. And so I, I took the total of the Little Creek and the Teals Creek, because Teals Creek with all those tributaries feeds into Little Creek. And then Little Creek, um, farther down, goes right into the Blackwater River. So that complete watershed is 15, 000, over 15,000 cubic yards, which amounts to three million plus gallons of, can you imagine, ugly sedimentary muck that's potentially to go in. And I just can't, every time I pick up a gallon jug of milk and I flash these numbers through and I just can't imagine that impact. So that's, the story we have is represented by Teal's Creek, Little Creek, which surrounded our farm, Four Corners Farm, here, and then um, farther on our friend's farm, who have wonderful apiaries and sell wonderful honey, the Angle Farm, I represented where the Little Creek goes into the Blackwater. And if you look at any of those areas today, it is just as bad as it was when they were actively constructing in 2018. And here it is, three years later. So thank you. Thank you, Betty. I'd like to introduce Ms. Amazetta Anderson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, hey everybody. I'm from Royal Virginia. That's where I'm living right now. I'm originally from West Virginia, and uh, where I come from, I'm born four miles south of the New River Gorge Bridge, where we used to say all the crazy people come every year yeah. to jump off the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm surrounded by water. Where I'm from, my father was a deep sea fisherman, so living uh, part of my life in Detroit around all the Great Lakes, I love water. Yeah. And knowing what water does for us. When I think about water, I think about the fact that we are creating two-thirds water. You know, that's us. We cannot survive without water. And of course, if we look towards having a healthy environment and healthy people, we have to have healthy, clean water. So when I learned about the Mountain Valley Pipeline situation, and also working with some of the young people that had been blessed to go up and work on the Four Corners Farm and going up there. And that was the first time that I got to see what the pipeline really looked like. I took a little walk. And um, when I saw the diameter, and just to think about how much of the earth we have to disturb in order to put in that type of pipeline. 
I said, Lord, I wonder, is it like it is with everything else in the United States? By the time the people's voices are really heard, sometimes it's too late. So I think I'll just get on board and do what I can to be a part of the people that will be willing to stand up and people that have went through the hardships of having what they thought was theirs, their paradise, just ripped out from under them. So I have a square up here, and in my square, when you find it, when you look at it, you're going to see the pristinity of what water means to all of us, the aquatic life, and how it provides us with the peace and the calm. And then I think, I'm going to do what I can with everybody I can, because I don't want to lose that. I used to have places in West Virginia, around Gauley Mountain, where we have mountain streams that just flow freely. Man did not organize that. He didn't blast it into place. It's just natural. And where I was born, I used to just go sit on a rock and ride down the hillside to what they call now White Water Rapids. We used to go down there for generation after generation and just have fun at the sandbar until one day somebody came and put up all kind of boulders and everything and told us we were trespassing. We said, really? How do we trespass on the new river, which belongs to everybody? The new river that's veins to the Nile River all the way in Egypt. How do you own that? So of course we had to go along with the flow because we didn't have the money to fight them and we was all young didn't know what was happening anyway. So at the end of that day, they built a restaurant called the Dinner Bell. People came out of Durham, North Carolina, told us that we no longer could go there and just play on the beach and in the new river. Now it's a great big worldwide, world-known business and everything, but I can remember the impact that it had on us when we could no longer just walk there and sit down on a rock and enjoy the beauty of the new river, which is now Whitewater Rapids, which connects to the Nile River all the way in Egypt. So that tells us something about water. Water flows, so let us all work together to allow the freedom of having safe drinking water and protect our waterways in the vicinity and somehow or another fight together for the reparations for the people who have suffered because of what the higher powers that be have taken away. Thank you so much, Ms. Amazetta, from yeah, West Virginia. Thank you, Maureen. I think I need that because I got a big mouth. <laughs> so before I get started about the pipeline, I want to say there are a few good things about the pipeline. And I met you. Mm -hmm. And I met people across this country. Um, I also want to introduce some of my neighbors from West Virginia that some of you don't know. You know some of them. Paula's behind the camera. Herman is somewhere around here taking care of the dogs like he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> then we have Ashley Berkeley. And hey, well, you know yeah. Ashley, <laughs> severely impacted the Green by River Crossing. I also so got this, sweet, this little project called Sweet Spring. We want you to come oh. out. Come out to Sweet Spring and see what we're doing out what he's doing out there and making us do. Um, <laughs> then we have my neighbors <laughs> Betty and Don Early. Artists, people need to talk to these people because they're Don. Uh, I go get it. Just talk to these people. They're artists. <laughs> uh, so I uh, see Rosanna Sweet Springs Institute over at Sweet Springs. Uh, who else have I missed? Here? Have you missed anybody? Okay. So those are my Monroe Summers County friends, and I'm going to do something that I've done in some other speeches and other talks because you all are water protectors, and you're protecting the water in, in West Virginia that a lot of people in Virginia aren't trying to protect, but you're all trying to protect it by the power invested in me, by me, <laughs> and only me, I now proclaim all of you all honorary West Virginia water protectors. Yeah. Yeah. I just got back off of a, some of you know I got back off of, I got sucked into a, a Zoom video which put me on an odyssey across the uh, eastern United States, the grandchildren walk across for our grandchildren. Um, You'll see three windmills out here. The folks from Indiana made those, and then we'll haul them back. So I said, they're going to the Mountain Valley Pipeline fight. The, the sunflowers, and it has a picture of the, they also came from Indiana. 
I said I'll take those two. Um, the Big Sunny Face. Some of you know Elliot that works with Seeds of Peace, been over at Yellowfish a lot. Her dad made that out of recycled material and set it up on top of a car from North Carolina. And he really couldn't make the trip back. So he's here, and Emily is going to try to repair him. He needs a little repair, but he's here for the fight, and his, her dad was really grateful for that. So that's some of the stuff I have here. Thank you for our little video we did for uh, our Appalachian Trail friends. Um, they're friends we disagree with. Um, anyway, I see lots of people from a lot of places. So, one of this walk with our grandchildren, we visited a lot of impacted communities in Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, and Delaware. We went through Marcus Hook and Chester outside of Philadelphia. Uh, preserve. Montgomery just did a Zoom meeting with one of the organizers we met, Matthew Pickett, uh, initiated this. Be sure to look at the Power Coalition web, Facebook page or Preserve Montgomery and watch that Zoom meeting. It was held Thursday night. It's about an hour. We don't want this to become a Chester or a Marcus Hook. Yeah. And we have, some, we have some commissioners and supervisors and officials that would be glad to make this a Marcus Hook or a Chester. And it will not happen in my watch. And I'm going to do a filing about that in a week or so. So, I get an email. We're going to do this water quilt. I don't quilt. My grandmother quilted. Made a beautiful quilt. Beautiful quilt. I don't quilt, but I had an idea. I didn't read the rest of the email. So this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bandana, West Virginia. Got to do a red bandana. And then I, after I, that made it, I said, oh, I didn't read the email. So we got a red band down here, and it says, West Virginia uh, Water Protectors. And I tried all winter to find somebody to embroider it, and all the embroidery machines in Virginia are broken. And I did find one in Allegheny County, I mean, Greenbrier County, called Allegheny Tees. And I went up there to, after I laid this out for them, and they said, what's a water protector? Yeah. And I said, well, you know, Greenbrier Watershed, all, where are the people that's doing things to try to protect your water, your drinking water? and your recreation water. And I talked to the Green Bar Watershed has three new members. <laughs> so, well, West Virginia Water Protectors, and I first thought it could be, well, I first thought about it, Save Monroe, Preserve Monroe, whatever. But I thought, who are the groups here that's really fighting this? And they are West Virginia Rivers Coalition. Then I have the Green Bar River Watershed Association. I know that Ashley's a member of that, I'm a member of that. We have the Greenbrier River. I see we have the Border Conservancy. That's a group that's over in the Zenith, Craig County area. The Border Conservancy has done some stuff. They've not been as active on this as, as now as they have been, but they've been fighting this too. And so you know Judy Ashley and Bill Wolf, they're actually part of that group. Even though you think of them as Indian Creek and, and um, Craig. And then we have Preserve and Road. Uh, Rosanna's our chairman. And uh, the sign that we made, so we had a sign that they had done to save the water table. And this all started, so we got a banner, we get somebody to paint us. And I've kind of confiscated the sign, and it led the rally in D.C. last week. Yeah. It pretty much says it all, no pipeline. Um, save Monroe, a lot of you are familiar with the work that Save Monroe done, and I'm not even going to try to talk about that there. I wish Nancy was here, but she just got back. I don't know where, I haven't talked to Judy on She's somewhere. Anyway, and Howdy and Scott and Holt, we're all members. I think all of us are from West Virginia maybe are members of Indian Creek Water Center Association. And then SCRAP, Summers County, SCRAP it stands for Summers County uh, Residents Against the Pipeline, and they've done some great work. So that's their water protectors. And I tried to find a candy darter. They don't make an application for a candy darter. <laughs> they have a rook trap and I got a little bluebird. <laughs> Put a cardinal up which just stand out. So I didn't make this quilt, I swear. I'm claiming responsibility for it. <laughs> I told Jess Sims that I couldn't find a candy darter. So a week later she says, I made one. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Uh, Jess, thank you. Mm -hmm.
It's absolutely beautiful. So um, she did that like in a week. Because she didn't have anything else to do. She just did it all. So I'm claiming responsibility for it even though I didn't make it. And I'm going to say this next quilt square may be the only quilt square that's actually built on the rat. Because it's made out of my shirt. This is the shirt that I, wore. I ripped it. So I, oh. I took my shirt and had this put on. Yeah. And I had a little that we're going to save the AT. And the, uh, so that's the history of our, our quilt squares and our fight. And um, it's time for this thing to speak on. Yeah. Lord, thank you. I'd like to welcome Simone Patterson from Roanoke, Virginia. Thank you. I, I've got to go up a little. Oh, look at me, tall as I am. <laughs> uh, just before I begin, I just want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land especially the great Cherokee Nation. My name is Simone Patterson, and as you can probably work out, I'm not from this area. <laughs> I'm from the deep south of the planet. <laughs> I know what living is like without water, so I'm quite passionate about this. I've given myself some notes so I don't rabbit on. So forgive me if I refer to my notes. But I just want to say, coming from suburban Sydney and landing in southwest Virginia, I've been here for the past 17 years. Isn't life amazing? You just don't know what's going to happen. And it's a real privilege to call this part of the world home a real privilege. Deep in my bones, I feel that privilege. So recently, I have been researching the quantum field. And monitoring the way that I think now, every time I'm on 81, or I'm on Blacksburg Road, zipping between Roanoke County, where I live, on the side of Catawba Mountain, with beautiful mountain water that runs every day, so crystal clear, just so beautiful. I can't believe it. I keep on asking my husband, is this going to stop? Will it run forever? Hope so. Hope so. But every time I go past the ugly serpent, I call it, I am so mad. I am so mad. In the pit of my stomach, I feel sick. I feel so angry. It's like my blood pressure goes up 10 points. Whew. So I monitor that way of thinking lately. I've been really thinking about how I have been thinking about the Mountain Valley Pipeline. I also call myself a visionary embroiderer. And I have three squares up on these two quilts, or three quilts, and they're little round mandalas. And most of my embroidery I see in my mind's eye after I've done some meditation. So I'm going to call on you to take some action now in your seats. If you can, if you're open to doing it. I want you to close your eyes. And we're going to take three big breaths. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, 
Hold two, three, four. Exhale two, three, four. One more. Inhale two, three, four. Hold two, three, four. Exhale two, three, four. Just return to normal breathing. I want you to see in your mind's eye the serpent that is the Mountain Valley Pipeline. See it winding its way across this beautiful country through our beautiful rivers and streams. <coughs> now, I want you to see this serpent in rainbow colours like the great rainbow serpent from the land of my birth, from Australia, the great beautiful rainbow serpent that wound its way across the earth, creating the mountains, the valleys and the rivers. Now I want you to see growing in that path the beautiful reds of the fire pinks, the beautiful yellows of the wildflowers of the sun drops, the fresh green ferns. See the blue of the happy cone flowers and the deep blues of the trilliums. Now I want you to finally see those beautiful violets and the blooming rhododendrons. I want you to couple this vision with joy, with joy in your heart that the Mountain Valley Pipeline has been stopped. It's been stopped. It's no longer economically viable, viable anymore. We have a beautiful rainbow serpent of wildflowers attracting bees and hummingbirds and wildlife of every kind. See it. Feel it in your heart. And so, let that vision be. Let that vision be. Let that vision be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simone. I'd like to introduce Kate Ferguson. Is here today from Albemarle County. Hey, this is crazy. I'm so glad for each of you that are here today. Um, I also didn't have a long time, so I have to look at paper. But one thing that I wanted to talk about as a Quilt Square creator was that moment in any really good collaboration. <coughs> when nobody any longer knows whose idea it was, or how it came to be this, or what, uh, what the last great idea to add to it was. And um, those, are, those are the moments I kind of live for in the, in the work that I'm doing. Um, so this has been a great collaboration, um, most closely with Rachel and Emily Blankenship Tucker, who um, mothered every detail of every invitation with their characteristic integrity and friendly grace. <laughs> uh, a great collaboration with Bernadette B.J. Lark, who brings her powerful leadership and talented and bold uh, power to every task and every day that she lives. Thanks to Ramona Hull, who we came to call uh, the quilting lady, and isn't with us today, but without her, there's no way. <laughs> 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 
bit of pairing, you know, what everyone sent in today's beautiful integrated pieces. So we're very grateful for her uh, and her expertise. Um, Zap McConnell, uh, artist, long collaborator, who did some of the videos, the song videos that you saw, the animations that you saw for the project. To um, Josh Vanna and Graham Smith White and Graham's son Buzz and Tom <laughs> Elliott. These are the people who always make every fool idea that, that I have stand up and, and work. Um, I think that our invitations, our acceptances, our inclusions of each other give the shape and the tone to the invitations we send out into the world. And the water quilts are the last in a series of invitations that Artivism Virginia has tried to create that inspire, bring beauty, and joy. Um, and that gives a place not only for the newcomer to begin to land, to hear the story of this struggle and this good fight, but even if the newcomers don't show up, it gives the long workers, many of whom are here today, a chance to refill their wellsprings and their inspiration and their determination. So um, thank you for those who've been fighting so long and it is a privilege to be here with you today. Um, we're making things together. We're making communities, songs, quilts, prayers. We are making together a new world. And though it seems slow work, what we know is that we will win. Thank you, Kay. I'd like to introduce Jessica Sims yeah. with us today from Richmond, Virginia. Very short remarks. Um, I want to echo what Mari said. Through the injustice of all of this, the beautiful thing that's happened is that we've gotten to be together, meet each other, have fellowship together, get to know each other, and make beautiful friendships that I think will last long after MVP is dead. Yeah, um, I'm coming from Central Virginia, so I want to send a message of solidarity from everyone there, um, including my mom, Peggy. I want to point out her square. This is um, her yellow fish. I want to thank you, thank you to Artivism for providing such wonderful creative ways to connect. Um, and so this was a really beautiful way to connect and um, we had spent the pandemic kind of passing pieces back and forth. I drew something <laughs> for her and then she'd sew it. Um, and so Artivism, thank you for making a project that can um, connect people and uh, talk about what's happening in a, a really um, creative and welcoming way. Um, so to, to end it, we're with you until MVP is dead, and uh, thank you so much for everybody and for what you're doing. Thank you. Jessica, thank you. I'd like to welcome Polly Branch with us today from Roanoke, Virginia. be here and being a part of this this quilt project um, stitching together the energies the passions of amazing people who are working endless hours um, is, a, is a privilege of me to be a part of that and I am grateful for those who brought me in and taught me and encouraged me to be a part of this process Mara and Amy and the Rileys um, on Teal Creek where when I did visit a number of times and went back um, the last time I was there, I should go back, um, was arrested and, and so those those moments went into some paintings which I today delivered to Bath County because I thought, hmm, well there's a, they've got an annual show, it's really big, a lot of people see it, there are also like a lot of rub signs along the way, so maybe this would be a good place to show them. So one of them is a self-portrait. Um, you know, hands cuffed, 
I went ahead and put the leg cuffs on as well, standing by Teal Creek, even though they didn't put those on until they took us in the ATV up the mountain to the black vans waiting. <laughs> um, but it was a, it was a wild experience for sure. Um, I was, you know it was uh, yeah it was it was my way of, of participating and feeling a little tiny bit of what many of you have been feeling and working on for years. So I appreciate that. I'm, I'm hoping and visualizing a number of families sitting and standing in front of those paintings. One of them has the endangered species, a log perch and the brown um, bat and the yellow finch. Well, the yellow finch was to represent yellow finch. <laughs> um, and, um, and then the other one with the marshal, you know, holding me and me kind of standing with this face I get when I'm perturbed, but <laughs> resigned <laughs> to my fate, I guess. So, um, so yeah, um, today's been a big day. So those, those paintings were, were delivered. We went to a, a memorial service for another um, friend from Roanoke, who was a, a major social, spiritual guide for young people, and he died early. And um, mm -hmm. so on the way here, Natalie Merchant was singing, you know, these are the days to remember. And, and they are, you know, these are the days that whatever touches us, whether it be the destruction and the horrors, or whether it be the collective spirit sewn together to create some art to inspire others, you know, we, we're here, we're, we're going to remember, and we have a purpose, and uh, I thank you all for, for your energy and, um, and being a part of, you, of this work. Thank you, Polly. I want to give a welcome to Irene Leach from Montgomery Woo! and Buckingham. Well, it's an honor to be here today, even though I had to lose a good friend and go to a funeral tomorrow in order for it to happen. Um, but he was someone who very much cared about the water and all the, the things that are here. Um, my square over there on the second, well, the second from the bottom on the right uh, is for the North Fork of the Roanoke River, because I live across the road from it, literally. Uh, when the road stops and then the, you know, it just goes straight down to the river. And the intent is to show, you know, the swirling that happens when you drop a stone and, you know, uh, into it and there's a little bit of foam uh, in the pearls and the shiny things and, that's a nice, clean river. And just below us is, is where the Bradshaw Creek comes into the North Fork. And so it's a lot less clean. I'm sure it's got some from the other side, you know, that comes by my house. And in fact, interestingly, somebody who knows more than I do about this stuff, they, somebody has put some monitor looking equipment across the road from us uh, and also down uh, the road on the North Fork and I'm wondering what's going on there. Um, I think maybe they're trying to check on themselves, who knows. Um, I also had the um, luck of my family farm in Buckingham County was to be bisected by the Atlantic Coast Pipeline and the North River. And because this was a mountain valley project, it's not written on there, but it's there. Mm -hmm. None of us can do anything without <coughs> water. There can't be life. We can't grow food. We need water. And somehow, as a society, we've got to figure this out. And we've got to start thinking about the people who are going to come behind us. And I know that 
those who preceded us on this land did a wonderful job of thinking they, they shared the ownership instead of owning it and they also you know looked at what's going to happen seven generations and a lot of us who've been fighting this have had people to laugh at us because we were concerned about our heritage we care about the land we didn't see it as something that you could just exchange for something somewhere else it's something that is a part of us. And I know you all get that, but there are a lot of folks who don't. And I, I hope we can find ways to help more people get it. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Irene. I'd like to welcome our final speaker for the afternoon, Anne Leslie Denham, who is here from Roanoke. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I hate the damages I've seen from this pipeline, but I love the building of community. Yes. And it's right here. Amen. Destruction slows down due to women perched in trees, protecting them and protecting the creeks that could be changed forever since money has become more important than life in our time. To the corporate powers, trees, mountains, streams, wildlife, and people are only objects in the path of the black snake that need to be removed. The workers do not hear the song of the whippoorwill. Indeed, only the women and the water protectors can hear them and mourn all the losses and gather all the lady slippers before they are crushed in the wake of the hideous black snake. The power of these women and these men is not lost and never will be. The earth herself gathers strength from them and keeps the memory of those who resist her destruction. Uh, this one I wrote to Ren and Anchor and to all tree sitters and water protectors. In the mind's eye of tree sitters, the reporters on the radio say it's over, the fight to save our mountains, our water, our land, the tree sitters have been taken down by force from their home in the trees, sheltered there for 932 days, a long enough time that the rhythm of life from the trees, the sunlight, the wind, has become part of them. It is far from over. Men on machines may cut down the white pine and the chestnut oak they lived in, but the resistance to this assault on nature and to life in connection with nature gains momentum as the chainsaws home. The perpetrators of this violence believe there is no price to be paid for leveling those trees, but Mother Nature suffers no fools. Humanity has only lived on Earth in the blink of an eye. Machines and corporate rule have only been here a millionth of a blink. The Earth knows how to renew herself and those who love her will survive these assaults. In the mind's eye of the tree sitters, hundreds of trees are already growing along the path of destruction, stretching to the horizon. And thank you. And thanks to everybody who came today to share stories. We're going to uh, have a little stitching now and a little singing. Uh, we want to invite first anybody who created a square to uh, join us during this next song. We want to acknowledge that we're here next to uh, Greenbrier Branch, which runs into Sinking Creek. And uh, we're working on our water quilt. We put this together in, in pandemic, so y'all are getting the premiere.
Let the spirit of the weaving waters into your heart. Life-giving power of waters into your heart. Ooh, let it be.
and do it in a creative way, I suppose. So I'd like to thank everybody who helped put today together. Kay, Graham, BJ and Emily, Rachel, Tom, um, the center, Russell. And JB, standing right here. We are a few of the members of this cool band called the Sun Sing Collective, which is a project of artivism, Virginia, and uh, it's put together a little over two years ago. We come from all sorts of different places and do all sorts of different things, and what a wild idea to put a bunch of crazy musicians together in the same room and see what happens. And um, one of the things that happened was uh, I brought this song of mine and we recorded it with this this thing, Sunbus, using solar energy all across the route of ACP and MVP. Right. Yeah. Nelson County, Nelson County, Monroe County, a bunch of crab trees all over the place. Awesome. Four Corners Farm with the help of many, many good pals. And uh, the song sort of started out as a tribute or a, being inspired by Larry Gibson. Many of y'all know Larry, Keeper of the Mountains. He's with us still in many ways. Um, a wonderful example of someone who digs in on principle, never gives up. And it sort of evolved into a song uh, about this pipeline fight and anybody stand, standing in the way of corporate greed. And, um, and it's especially dedicated. I mean, there are a lot of great folks doing awesome work out there, and it really does take everybody. There's a place for everyone in the work. There is room for everyone to show up but, and this is especially dedicated to the brave folks who put themselves physically in the way between whatever it is whether it's a it's a dozer or it's a truck hauling bunch of pipe with song 460 today or it's a or it's a chainsaw who knows what it is but put yourself in the way and put yourself in danger to try and stop this thing which we know is so incredi incredibly dangerous and we're not going to let it happen. So anybody here who's taken direct action, supported direct action, uh, Crystal, Jamie, Emily, uh, you know, special dedication to all the AAP folks. Too many to name here. But um, it's called To the River. And for anyone who is getting in the way in your particular way, so if you want to sing along, feel free.